Hi, I'm Pete McNulty from the Math Department. Now that we've taken a look at some of the advantages that flipping a classroom does offer, let's try and gain a common nomenclature about the different types and the different models of flipping a classroom. Because the idea of flipping a course can be quite daunting, but really you don't have to start off at that level. So I'd like to share with you a couple of slides which will just briefly describe the different levels and the different ways that you can flip a class. Everything from just getting your toes wet right on into flipping the whole course. All right, thanks for watching and I hope this helps. There are several different models and levels of a flipped class. So let's take a look at the first, and perhaps this is just getting your toe wet. This flipping a portion of your class, like you might have a weekly grammar lesson or maybe a vocabulary lesson, or in my case I had a sometimes we'd assign difficult math problems that really needed to be um, presented to the students, but we didn't need, always need to take class time to do it. So using a whiteboard app like EduCreations or something like that can allow you to flip only a portion of your class just to get used to the concept of flipping a classroom. Step two, a little more work, is flipping an entire lesson. Um, you may have a certain lesson that requires a fair amount of lecture and flipping the classroom allows you to do maybe a better job with your lecture. You could color code or give thought to the presentation in a way that you wouldn't be able to on the fly in front of the students at the whiteboard. Students also like the different change of pace that it offers a class. So even if you don't want to do it because it improves the presentation, it might just be a nice way to diversify some of the ways that you're teaching. The next step up would be flipping the entire course. Now I did, I did that this year with my geometry course because it lends itself to that. There's a lot of lecture um, in this geometry class and we also go over homework a lot. So I did much of that on video each night and while it made for a really, really long year and I'm not sure I would recommend it for everybody, for every class and every track, I am pleased with um, much of what happened to my geometry class this year. Finally, the last and perhaps most evolved model of flipping is, is flipping the entire course and allowing students to move at their own pace. All of my videos are now on YouTube. While I don't want to follow this model, it will be possible for a student now to watch all of the videos beginning in September and move through the material at their own pace. If you want to set up and facilitate a course where you allowed students to take tests as they were ready for them, this would be something you might want to consider doing. Of course, you'd have to talk it over with your department chair because I'm not sure Loyola is completely ready uh, to be doing this. Okay, so those are the four models of a flipped class. Let's take a look at the different levels of flipping a class. In addition to the four models, we've identified four levels of a flipped class. And the first is maybe the easiest to get involved with. And that would just be finding someone else's video be it on YouTube or somewhere on the internet, that they've made which covers the same material you want to talk about. You find the link, you push it out to the students through iTunes U, and you have now flipped that portion of your class. Well, the drawback to this is while it's easier than making your own video, sometimes, especially over the long run, students lose a connection to you, the teacher, if you were to do this on every concept every night. So, the next step would be to create your own little presentation, and the easiest way would be through a, many of the whiteboard apps like EduCreations, Ask3, Nomia, or Explain Everything. The next installment of this professional development, I'll go through four of the different apps that are out there. I know we all saw EduCreations last summer, but just to be exhaustive, I'll talk about that a little bit, and we'll move on through some of the more complex ones um, like explain everything. So if you want to create a whiteboard app, that's an excellent app for just explaining something simple and procedural like how to do a math problem or a science problem or maybe diagram a sentence, something like that. If you want to take the next step, the next level of flipping your class would be to film yourself live. And there are two major uh, softwares out there. Steve uses iMovie and that's available to all of us on our iPads for free. And I've been using something called Camtasia, which is more of a video editing software, which I've liked as well. Um, it does provide me the connection to the students because they can see me and hear my voice and see me manipulating the computer as they're learning. 
Perhaps the most advanced form would be to film with a partner or a dialogue so that students are witnessing your class at their own pace and learning at their own pace. Some of the questions that they might have you could plant with your dialogue partner so that they're asking the questions and there's a little bit more of a two-way flow to the video and it might be easier for students to participate mentally in the video that way. All right, hopefully this video has interested you in flipping the classroom a little bit more and maybe lowered your fear of, uh, of trying it out. Thanks for watching.